We're going to start a series of messages, and this series of messages was, um, it was, uh, uh, we, we began to realize that God, uh, from what God's been telling us for months now, and Pastor TJ began to talk about this next wave of God, and he compared that to um, surfers preparing to get ready to ride the waves and all the preparations required, and, and God is speaking to us, to and, and this title of this series is Prepared, the Next Wave of God. And I'm going to talk about, and there's a lot in that wave of God. There's the glory of God. There's the power of God. There's healing, deliverances. Uh, if you will, it's the whole ball of wax that we're seeing that God is bringing uh, from the Word of God into this next wave of God. So there'll be different ones speaking in this series, and we're going to be obeying God and what He's telling us to uh, help you get prepared and help me get prepared for what is coming. So let's go to the Lord in prayer and uh, just open up your hearts, open up your mind, your spirit to receive what God has for you. Heavenly Father, we come to you, Lord, this morning. We thank you for this opportunity once again to bring the word of God. We thank you for the anointing, Lord, here today, God. We thank you for the anointing that's going out over the airways that is touching people by your spirit, Lord. God, we thank you for touching them right now, Lord, as they are preparing to receive this word. I pray that they will not go away the same, that they'll be changed, that they'll be motivated, that they'll be, uh, make a decision to, to be different uh, and to receive what you're pouring out in the times that we're talking in and we're, we're talking about. Father, we give you the praise for it in Jesus' name. So God has been preparing us. He has... Uh, He's been helping us uh, uh, for this next wave of God. Even though you may not realize it, he has been preparing the last couple of years, has, has had a lot of, a lot of things happen in it, but uh, he's been preparing for us in that. And the spiritual atmosphere is changing. The spiritual atmosphere is changing in the church. There is an awakening that's taking place. We're hearing from all around the world where God is moving. And, and people are waking up to God and the things of God. The church is being ignited once again, and there's a purpose that God has is to bring forth His plan, and we want to talk about what He's going to do. We're going to talk about how He's preparing us because we want to experience the fullness of this next move of God. I believe in this next move of God, there'll be an outpouring of God's grace. Over the last several weeks, uh, Pastor TJ has been teaching us about the grace of God and how that is the empowerment of God. And uh, I, I see this grace of God being poured out upon the body of Christ in this next wave of God. And, and within that will be His glory, His power. And what's this going to result in? It's going to result in a harvest. And we must be prepared uh, to, for that harvest. Uh, as that grace of God begins to be poured out, is pouring it out for a reason. There's a purpose that, that we have. And if you if you're, feel like you're lacking purpose in the kingdom of God, if you'll just grab a hold of what God is saying today and what He's going to be saying over the next few weeks, you're going to begin to realize that you have a purpose. And that you've not been left out. That God has a calling for you. God has a ministry for you to do. And uh, God is pouring out the grace for that. So we need to open up our ears and hear what God is preparing, uh, that, that He has prepared for us. Because this, you know, He, not, he doesn't do these things uh, to awaken the church and to enlighten and uh, to bring an outpouring just to, so that we can have a good time, so that we can be blessed, so that we can be, you know, just have good feelings. No, there's, there's much more than that. All that's in there, but God is doing it because His heart is after one thing, and that's after the souls of men and women. So He has a place for us, and it's a, it's a wonderful ride that's getting ready to happen, that it's already begun. Get your tickets, get ready, and let's experience what God has for us. In 2020 and 2021 has been a very trying time. Uh, there's, we've experienced so many things that we have never experienced before in the world and ourselves. Many of us were not prepared. 
Many of us, uh, many people uh, were, weren't prepared for what was coming. They lost hope. Uh, they become discouraged. Some even begin to question God. Where are you, God? Because of the hard times that was going on. I want to uh, give you a quote here from that, that, I, that I want to share with you. And this quote came from, it was written, inscribed, into the wood and carved into the wood on the cell of a Holocaust victim many, many years ago. And this person wrote and said, I believe in the sun even when it's not shining. I believe in love even when I cannot feel it. I believe in God even when He is silent. So even though God seems to be silent, even though you may feel like he's, he's forsaken you, He is not. He's been there all along. He has been preparing you. And I'm going to explain to you how He's been preparing us. Uh, he's been so very much involved in that with His people. So let me explain. This first statement here says, Your hard times have been used of God to prepare you. Your hard times. Now, uh, Pastor TJ uh, talked about David last week in 1 Samuel 17, 37. Let's take a look at that verse again. And it said, David, in 1 Samuel 17, 37, David said, Moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of the Philistine. Well, do you think David was having some hard times? How often do you have a bear show up? or a lion. I mean, it happened from time to time in David's time. But you see, uh, David uh, was being prepared during that time of God. He was being prepared for a greater victory. And those hard times were testing him. But also, you got to realize that he wasn't having hard times all the time. And in between those hard times, he's praising and worshiping God. He's been growing in God's grace, which is his power and his ability. So your hard times, God, in those hard times, He's been giving, His mercy has been there with you. He has been empowering you. He has not left you nor forsaken you. So this, this process prepares you for the future. Now this next quote is again another one that Pastor TJ used last week, and we want to take a look at it again. It says, The biblical approach to the future involves prayer and preparation more than prediction and planning. And I want us to zero in on those words, prayer and preparation. That's what we're talking about now. God is preparing. Prayer is so very important, and that's going to be one of the things we're going to be talking about in the weeks ahead. We'll hit on it just a tad at the end of the message today. But moreover, more than prediction and planning. Prediction, I see that as prophecy. Prophecy, uh, you know, telling about the future. You know, prophecy might tell me what's coming, but it does not prepare me for what's coming. Prophecy uh, can encourage me, it can enlighten me, it can excite me, it can be uh, encouraging, it can be all those kind of things, but it does not prepare me. I must prepare in the middle of the hard times, just like David did in between those times, between the bear and the lion. And you've had bears and lions come your way, but God has given you a victory. He's given you a, a, an empowering. He's pouring this wave of grace out upon you for you can deal with uh, the giants or you can deal with the great uh, victory that's coming your way. So I must allow God's mercy and grace to prepare me for the victory. God is releasing great grace and great power for this next move of His glory. In Acts chapter 4, verse 33, And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them. So they gave them great power and great grace. Comes with that grace comes a great power that God is doing. For what? For the witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you might say, well... Uh, uh, there's so much wickedness in the land today. It seemed like there's so much opposition. And it, it, and, uh, but in the days of the apostles and the, and, and the disciples, there was an outpouring of God's grace in a way that brought forth power that caused them to give a great witness of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And one of those things that they did was just what Jesus did. Miracles, signs, wonders, healings, deliverances. And this was a great testimony of the resurrection of Jesus. 
Jesus Christ and many came into the kingdom of God. And this is the very thing that God wants to do in you and me and in the church in the day that we're living in right now. The past is the past and the beginning of this new thing has begun and this year you shall see more and more. But the thing is you will be in the middle of it. You will be a part of it and God has a place for you in that. And this principle we can see in the Word of God. Jesus was talking to the disciples and He was talking about Capernaum. And uh, He was talking about Sodom. And, and uh, he, told, he said, he said uh, if the miracles, if the signs, if the great works that were performed in uh, Capernaum had been performed in Sodom, now, Sodom was a, said that they would have still been there today. They would still been alive. They, they would have repented. So that's amazing to me to, to understand that, that God's, uh, through the signs of wonders, through those miracles, those great things, he said, they said they would come to repentance. This is one of the main mechanisms which God uses to bring in the kingdom of God. With great power, they gave forth the apostles witness of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Psalms 5.20, or Romans chapter 5, verse 20 says, But where sin abounds, the grace of God more abounds. So as you may look and see how much sin has abound, understand that more grace <laughs> comes forth. So the worse it looks, understand the greater of the grace that God is outpouring. We are set up for a, uh, we're set up for a move of God. This world is set up for a move of God. He has to obey His word. He has to bring forth this grace. He has to bring forth this empowering. He has to bring forth this wave. Why? Because sin has abound around the world and everywhere we look. But praise God. God uses our hard times to prepare us for the future. Joseph also was one who had hard times, uh, and it prepared him for his future. He was sold into slavery. He was lied about. He was put in jail. Uh, he was forgotten, but God. But God remembered him. But God had a plan for him. God had not forgotten him. And God brought him forth out of, of that jail, put him in a high place in the kingdom of the earth at that time. And, but I don't want you to understand and realize the coming, the forgotten, the forgotten is coming forth. Those that seem like you've been forgotten, you're coming forth. God is bringing forth this move to bring you forth and set you in a place even as he set Joseph. Now, during Joseph's time, it was hard times, God developed something into him, many things he developed in him, but this is one of the things that developed in him was a positive attitude. And this positive attitude is one of the things that God wants to uh, 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 bring into each of us through our hard times. And we see this in Genesis chapter 50, verse 20. He says, But as for you, you thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good. To bring to pass, as it is this day, to save much people alive. G Joseph called his injustice good. That which he had gone through, the rejection and the injustice against him from his brothers. And he was talking to them and he says, but God meant it for good. So he named his, his, uh, uh, his trial, his hard times, he named them good. Whatever you name your heartaches, your, your injustice, your disappointments, your failures, your regrets will determine your future. If you don't name them, they'll name you. If you uh, let it name you, you'll have things like, I'm, I'm just not happy, I'm not this, I'm not that, I'm depressed, uh, I can't get the victory, I can't do this or that, and uh, I was rejected, Dad rejected me, Mom did this, and on and on and on. But God is here today to change that. And take, don't waste the hard times that you're going through. Let God develop in you a positive attitude so that you can be, even as Joseph and even as David uh, were, uh, Joseph called his injustice good. Name yourself before a crisis or it will name you. 
in your crisis, it exposes what's inside of you and what begins to come forth. And in that time when you this this is where this is where the rubber meets the road. This is where in the midst of our hard times that we begin to realize who we've got to realize who we really are in Christ Jesus. I am a child of God. I am in the kingdom of God. I am above only and not beneath. I am the head and not the tail. The enemy's underneath my feet. I am blessed as I go in and I'm blessed as I go out. Uh, I am healed. I am just go on and on. This is who you are and when you define yourself as such you can go through with the peace of God through any of these problems any of these hard times that may come your way I am in covenant with God I have covenant relationship with God I have the covenant rights of God I have uh, I have the, all the blessings of the covenant of God so that's who I am a covenant child of God so preparation is what we're talking about, being prepared. One of the things I like to do to prepare myself every day, one of the things I like to do is put on the whole armor of God. I put on the helmet of salvation. And when I, when I say that, I say, Lord, I put on the helmet of salvation. And then I begin to say other things and then all the other pieces of the armor. And when I do that, it's different each, each time I say it. It's different each day. And it seems like that piece of armor that I need the most for that day, I'll spend more time making my confessions on that piece of armor, not even knowing what I'm going to face later in the day. So when I put on the salvation or, or the helmet of salvation, I thank God for salvation. Salvation. I thank the Lord that I'm saved. I'm set free. I'm delivered. I, I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. I thank the Lord that my sins are forgiven and that I have uh, I, I am righteous in God. I thank him. I thank the Lord that I have eternal life. So then I had to put on that breastplate of righteousness. And that breastplate of righteousness says that I am righteous. Why? Because the scripture says, I have been made the righteous of God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, I can say I am righteous. I put on the robe of righteousness. I take off my robe of filthy rags and I put on the robe of his righteousness. And God looks to, to, uh, through that righteousness when he looks at me through the blood of Jesus Christ. Uh, and he sees a righteous child standing before him. This is our position in God. So I proclaim that each day. I put on the belt of truth. I have the truth concerning all circumstances and situations that I face today. I know the truth. I have the truth of the knowledge of God and the kingdom of God and the gospel of Jesus Christ. I am enlightened with that truth. And I have the truth uh, to overcome all the lies of the enemy. And my feet are shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. I have peace. I have the peace of God that passes all understanding. I I understand and know what's going on. I understand what's happening in the world. I understand what's happening in my life. And I put on that whole armor of God. And then you take the, the last one, or almost the last one, which is the sword of the Spirit. And we take forth the Word of God. And we take it forth in the, and His Word begins to come out of our mouth as we worship Him and praise Him. Now let's go back to take a look at this one called the breastplate of righteousness. You see, you, you've got to have revelation of all of the armor which is th that you put your on, on you, which is uh, defensive. It, it is protection of the body. Before you can be effective picking up the sword of the Spirit and taking the victory that God has already given you. So you must have a revelation of it. And the enemy is going to attack in all those areas continually. And he comes against people with, with these thoughts. Uh, and, and you start feeling this, this thought, you know, I'm not good enough. You're not good enough. God, uh, God, you know, that's all that God's, that's for somebody else. That's not for me. Uh, he, he, he doesn't like me that much. Or, you know, those kind of condemning, uh, the demonic, the condemning statements that the enemy tries to get you to believe. And if he can get you to believe that, then he can, can bring, bring defeat against you. So what you have to what you have need to understand is that you're dealing with rejection and the enemy wants you to feel that you're rejected by God 
Because He knows if you know that you're not rejected by God. He knows if you know that, that if you know that you are the child of God and you are what? The apple of His eye. Then the enemy knows he's totally defeated. There was a minister uh, that uh, he's a minister of the gospel, uh, Kevin uh, Zadii. And he, he, he passed away. He died uh, and he was, and this back in the 90s, he died and he was dead for about six hours. And he came back to life. And when he came back, he, he told what he learned in heaven. And that's just what he teaches a lot about that, of what he learned in heaven. He says, one of the things I learned in heaven was this. He says, I, 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 I didn't feel the same things that I did in earth. He said, I, I, didn't, I, I, I didn't feel the same or I didn't think the same. Uh, I thought this about myself and I thought that about myself. And he says, I didn't feel that at all. And, and, and I realized and, and God taught me that, uh, that that was external to me. That that was the enemy's influence on me, on my spirit, on my soul, on my, uh, my mind, will, and emotions, and even on my body. The things that I felt like I desired, I desired things which were of this world. He realized that that, that was not him. And it actually made him mad. He got mad in heaven. So he, he, got, he was upset. Why? Because he was being duped by the devil. Now, he was a, a mighty minister of God, healings, miracles, all this kind of stuff. But he was realizing, he's getting understanding that, that his capacity for what God wanted him to do was being hindered by this lack of understanding of, of who he really was and the righteousness of God that's in him. And these things are external to you. You've given your heart to the Lord. You belong to God. You don't, you're, you're not filled with some other kind of spirit. You're filled with the Spirit of God. And all the devil can do is come from without and begin to try to influence you some way so that he can, so that he can get the upper hand on you. So what you do is you have to, again, have the revelation of that righteousness. And you are righteous. That means you're in right standing. All the armor of God, as I said earlier, was defensive except one, and that's the sword of the Spirit. First, must have, we must have that revelation of, of all the rest of the pieces. In this next wave of God, it will be imperative that we use and know how to use the sword of the Spirit. Do you think there would be a move of God without opposition? Do you think there'd be a move of God without spiritual warfare? Of course, there's more spiritual warfare going on right now than ever before. There's more opposition against the church and against you. And the enemy wants you to think, well, your church is dead. Or you think this or think that the devil is a liar. Your church is alive. Your church is going forward. Your church is full of the power and the might of God. And you say, well, they're just a handful of us. It only takes a handful of people to get a hold of God and turn the world upside down. And that's exactly what God's doing. There's hands full of people in all parts of this world and across our nation and God is putting His hand upon them and raising them up and you're going to begin to hear and see and you're going to begin to see everywhere this outpouring of God. You're going to begin to see this change in the body of Christ and you're going to see them begin to come forth and reap that harvest in this last day that we're, that we're living in. Strongholds will be pulled down as we take that sword of the Spirit of God. Now you must use the Word of God. Hebrews 4.12 says, The Word of God is quick, powerful, and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing sunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and mower, and a discerner of the thoughts and intents of, uh, thoughts and intents of, of the heart. It's a two-edged sword. I looked up the Greek on that, and, and the Greek word is distomos. Distomos means a double, having a double mouth, as like a river, having a double mouth. It's a two-edged sword. It's the written word and the spoken word. God's written word on one side of that sword and His spoken word on the other side of the sword. How is He going to get that other spoken word? That's you speaking that word, bringing that word forth. And it is powerful when you take the word of God, whether it is the written word that you're quoting, 
you're the one that's given that spoken word or it's a it's a word that may not be written in the scripture but it's a word that God has given you personally a word that God has put into your heart a word that God has spoken to you and you begin to grab hold of that word and you speak that word because it says it's it's sharp that it can divide even to asunder. It's precise. It gets right down where the need is. It divides the chaff uh, from, from the good. It, it takes out, the, and, and this is the power of the Word of God. And I can remember a time when I was 19 years old, God gave me a word, and that word was this. He said that my latter days shall be greater. My latter days, and I remind the devil about that all the time. I'm reminding him more about it now than ever before because I don't know about you, I don't know what age you might be, but I know what I am. I'm in my latter days, and my latter days are greater, and I'm, I'm going after that with all of my heart, and I'm going after that because God has spoken it, and it shuts the mouth of the devil again and again and again. In Isaiah chapter 43, it says, Put me in remembrance. Let us plead together. Declare now that thou mayest be justified. Plead there doesn't mean begging. It's a legal term. And that's where you go in and you plead your case. You take your case before God. You take your case before that court system. And God wants us to take His Word, which is His Word, and bring it before Him. He says, put me in remembrance. How do you put Him in remembrance? He is the Word of God. So when we take His Word, we put Him in remembrance, and then we plead together with Him for whatever it is, the will of God, and we take that will of God and we declare that we what? May, may be justified. That means justice comes. That means uh, setting things right. God begins to set things right in your life when you begin to take the Word of God and you begin to face, confess the Word of God, and you're going to do that when you don't feel like it. You're going to do that when you think it's, it may not even apply to you. You're going to do that when the enemy is saying just the opposite. You're going to do that when you're facing everything that says just the opposite of that word. You're going to do that when you don't feel like it, when you're tired, when you're wore out. You're going to do that and all of a sudden things are going to begin to change. Things are going to change around about you. And as you confess that word of God and things are going to be set right in your life. Things are going to be set right in your mind. Things are going to be set right in your finances and in your health. It's going to be set right in all these areas of your life as you begin to do that more and more. Mark eleven twenty four says, Therefore I say to you, whatsoever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. So we take that shield of faith and that sword of the Spirit and we have faith applying it to the Word of God and seeing Him move mightily. This next wave of God, look at this statement, this next wave of God will be characterized by His people speaking and using the Word of God like never before. They'll be confessing the Word like never before. The victorious in the future will be, will be those who have hid themselves in the Word where the enemy cannot touch them. Take a look at Psalms 91, verse 1 through 3. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. They that hide in that secret place of the, of the Lord. They're not going to be afraid of terror, not afraid of pestilence, evil, or darkness. None of the, the rest of the scriptures there in Psalms 91, you need to take a look at Psalms 91 and begin to pray that. Many people are praying that, especially in the time that we've been living in these last couple of years. Psalms 91 verse 8 says, Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Only what you'll see is their reward. What... Uh, the reward of the wicked. The reward is the judgment. You see, when God judges, He gives rewards. It's rewards uh, to the righteous. They get some good. They get some good rewards. The, the the evil, the wicked, they get their reward, which is not so good. He will give you angels charge over you. Says also in the scriptures. 
gives the angels charge over you. Psalms 91. Take that, hide in it, because when you hide in that, and when you hide in that secret place, you get there by confessing the word, you get in his holy presence, intimacy with God, and you cannot be touched by the enemy. He cannot touch you with any of those things. Those that will soar in this next wave will be those who prepare themselves. They will start a new habit of using the word of God. It will become normal to them to speak the word continually. You can start a new habit in 30 days. You can break an old habit in 30 days. I challenge you to take the next 30 days to go after the Word of God, begin to confess it, memorize it more than more than you ever have before. A friend of mine, his name's Daryl Johnson. He's spoken at our church. He's a, a minister and an author. He uh, has spoken in our men's group, and he had a dream this week. And this dream came from God. I believe it. And it goes, I said, man, that is exactly what I'm going to be preaching about. And here's what he saw. He said, I saw lots of people running with excitement. I saw in the dream we were all running, quoting the promises of God. We were on a time schedule of sorts and had to get as many scriptures quoted before time ran out. Every scripture quoted came to pass immediately. No matter what it was, healing, finances, loved ones saved, it didn't matter. I looked around and everyone was focused on their assignment, which was to speak the word boldly. It released great power and caused things to instantly appear. I said to myself in the dream, this is Jubilee. They were about Father's business. They were focusing on what their assignment and they were using the word of God. They were running quickly because they were excited and they were excited about what God was doing. They were excited of of bringing these things uh, as they spoke the word of God. It was done instantly. And church, I believe that this is a prophetic prayer and that we'll begin to see this begin to happen. Those that grab hold of this message, this series, you're going to begin to move in even that capacity in the days ahead. Those who receive the grace in this next move will be more than blessed. They're going to be blessed physically, uh, financially, spiritually, healings, uh, abundance, where there's been lack, where there's been oppression, depression, there's going to be freedom and liberty in Christ. Romans 5.17 says this, Those who receive abundance of grace and the gift of, of righteousness will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. Now, I like this scripture. Pastor TJ brought it out a few weeks ago, and he says, those who receive, that means you've got to receive it. He's giving it, and then there's the gift of righteousness. It's a gift, and this, and, but you have to receive both of them. And if you, if you will receive what God is saying here today, and you begin to proclaim it and act on it, what's going to happen? You're going to begin to reign in life. You're going to be above and not beneath. Things are going to cha- change and, and, and be changed around about you. And I expect in my own life many things to be changed. I expect it to be turned around. Uh, in our hard times, God has uh, prepared us. And I wanted to share something. Like I said, we've been going through a lot of hard times, a lot of hard things in the last couple of years. And God has been preparing us in it, and we didn't know it. And he's speaking new things to us. Uh, in my family, I've had some hard times this year. Uh, and many of you out there, you're, in your families, you've had some very hard times as well. Others, has not has been as hard. But we started the year out. Justin was very sick. We had, uh, within a few months in the spring, we found out that he had cancer and a large tumor growing in his body. And, of course, we began to pray and to seek God and he, he got help, he got uh, uh, medical treatment, and today he's doing fantastic. Uh, 
in remission we're hearing that kind of words like that and we're so very thankful to, for that but even in the midst of that uh, some other things happened uh, to myself and to my wife mine wasn't that bad even though I did go to the hospital they didn't find anything wrong with me but other than I got a I was given some medication is wrong kind and my wife was given wrong kind as well and it put her in a hospital but we found some other things there while she was there and uh, she was having some very serious problems with plaque in the arteries of her heart. And after we finally, uh, we finally got the final diagnosis, uh, they went in, did the catheter, and, and checked all of her heart, uh, the arteries. And we said, well, just put in stents wherever you need to put stents. Just go ahead and take care of that. And the doctor came out, and, and, and he sat with me in the waiting room. And he said, um, I don't have good news for you. And that's the way he started. He says, your, your wife has major blockages. She has three arteries that are um, 100% uh, blocked and many other blockages. Stents cannot fix it. She has to have open heart surgery and she has to have five bypasses. Well, that was, uh, wasn't what I wanted to hear that day. But we went to prayer. We began to seek God. What do we do? What can we do? And we began to look for any kind of way, natural means or whatever way, and praying for her healing and all that. And God began to lead us and direct us. They had her scheduled October, I think, the 19th, around that time, for the open heart surgery. And we decided after what God had shown us, and I won't go into all that, but we just said we're going to cancel that. And one of her doctors says, uh, well, I'm canceling it anyway because she, uh, it's too dangerous for her to have an operation. But what happened now, though, is she, was, she, she has been touched. She, has, she is doing well. Her color has come back. She's able to do the dishes again and do things around the house, and, and we're excited about that. But in these hard times, and some of you have had worse times. There's been death. There's, uh, I also lost a very close friend this week, and it's, it, 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 doesn't, it's not feel, it doesn't feel good. But God is God, and He has not forgotten us. And He will, uh, he, has, he has been with us through it all. And the enemy wanted to take us down, take us out, but God said no. And God is changing us, and He's given us revelation. He's given us understanding. He's calling us to grab hold of what we're hearing here today. Pastor DJ told us that when we come back last year, he said when we come back into our services, it's going to be different. And yes, it's been different. Some of the differences I don't care that much for. But one part I do like the best, and that's where there are more power in the presence of God in the house. And the praise and worship is growing stronger more and more. And uh, it, is tr it is true that it's different. But it's only God that can make it different. And this is a God thing that he's making to remember uh, that, that he's doing. And uh, I encourage you to be in church and uh, just remember the, God, the trials that you've been having is bringing you forth uh, out of uh, uh, getting you prepared for your future. So the main thing about the hard times that I've been through and with my my family, it produces something else. There's something else that God does in us during that time. And it produces thankfulness and gratefulness. This is something that the body of Christ must have, and uh, we need to talk about it more. But this is, let God bring forth that I am so thankful th that my wife is alive. At Christmas or at uh, Thanksgiving time, we, we, we talked in the family, but what are we thankful for? Well, I'm thankful. I was thankful that Justin was alive, and I'm thankful my wife's alive. I am thankful. And, and that thankfulness, there's something more to that. For God to bring the blessings that he's talking about in this next wave of God, he can only bring it on a people who are grateful and thankful. It is a people that when it comes, they're not going to say, I did this. They're not going to take credit for it. They're not going to end the church. They're not going to be thinking, oh, you know, look at me and look what I've done. No, they're going to be totally thankful for what God has done. And I, I am so excited about that myself because I know that as I am thankful and grateful that I am in line for the blessings of God to be brought forth. Psalms 149 verse 6 says, Let the praises of God be in the mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. 
So God is raising up a people that will praise and worship the Lord and they'll be like David when the challenge comes to the family. They'll be like David in 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 26. It says, And then David spoke to the men who stood by them, saying, What shall be done for the man who kills the Philistine and takes away the reproach from Israel? Look about that, what I underline. What shall be done for the man? What shall be done for the man or woman that will, will slay the, the, the lion and the bear in their life and be grateful for the things of God and be grateful for what God has done in their lives? See, this is a righteous indignation that raised up in, uh, in uh, David when he, when he said these words right here. And he says, then what blessing is going to come? Church, you can ask the same thing. What's blessings going to come there's going to be all kinds of blessings that'll be coming into your life as you rise up and as you uh, take that spiritual indignation and come against the enemy of your life God has been preparing you for great miracles greatness is in your destiny greatness is coming into your life as you grab a hold of what God's doing and you get on this wave and you ride this with 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 God in this next wave of the Lord Then the next part of that verse says, takes away the reproach. There's a reproach in lack. There's a reproach in sickness. There's a reproach in death. Or not so much death, but there's a reproach in um, uh, oppression and depression. And we say, what are you talking about a reproach? Well, I feel it. I feel like. No, I believe in God. I believe in healing. I believe in all this. So why am I walking around sick? Why do I have this problem and that problem? Well, I've got to get a hold of the Word of God because that's not God's will. That's not what God wants to do. God wants me to take this Word and begin to speak it out of my mouth and watch all those things that begin to take place. And here's how you do that. You put on this last piece that goes with the armor of God that pulls them all together. And you read that in this last verse that we have here this morning, Ephesians 6, 18. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. So that's, that's, a, that's listed with the whole armor of God. So you begin to pray in, in the Spirit Praying the Word of God, praying in the, in the Spirit, always making supplication. That means getting into it. That means really praying, praying it, praying and seeking God. You may say, I haven't heard anything from God about this next wave. Well, it only comes by intimacy. And as you are more intimate with God, as you more pray and seek God, the more you will hear and you will know about this move of God. So begin to rise up. Take back. Take back what the enemy has stole from you. Take back that name. Hallelujah. The righteous of God in Christ Jesus. Take it back. Begin to pray daily and do the word of God. Well, I pray this morning that this message has touched you and has ministered to you. We just come to the Lord right now in prayer. And I'm going to pray in, in closing, remind you again on Wednesday night uh, to tune in for intercessory prayer. Uh, so don't forget that. Be sure and check the bulletin, check the, the website, and uh, plan on seeing you this coming Sunday at Garfield High School. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, I pray, Lord, that something has been said today that will cause us to be ignited by the Spirit of God and cause us to be uh, uh, changed, transformed. Lord, I thank you for grace, and I pray for the grace of God being poured out on everyone that's heard, heard this message, everyone that's listening right now, everyone that will listen. I'm praying for the, the grace of God to be poured out, to be poured out mightily upon them. Father, that they may experience in this move of God, this wave of God, that they may experience the blessings of God, that they may experience the joy of bringing others into the kingdom of God, that they may experience the joy and the satisfaction and the purpose of God being used by God. And, and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you for those blessings upon everyone. And Lord, I bless them as they go in Jesus' name. Amen.